Hi, welcome to Wiki is Fan versus Critic Debate. Uh, I'm Matt Atchity, editor in chief of RottenTomatoes.com. Uh, joining me, representing the fans, is Greater Good. Greater Good, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Matt. It's great to be on again. Uh, great to have you. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, episode five, uh, and it's um, first of his name, uh, which represents uh, that references Tommen uh, being crowned king of Westeros, uh, and he is the first King Tommen. Uh, and yet, in spite of that uh, coronation, we don't get a lot of Tommen here. Uh, we actually get more of a lot of the other characters. Uh, and We're going to start off talking about Cersei. Uh, we get an early conversation between Cersei and Marjorie where uh, she talks about uh, plans for the future. She questions Marjorie's plans and whether or not we're going to see anything, um, you know, see her come in as queen. Uh, it's an interesting conversation, definitely with a lot of uh, subtext in it. Uh, and then we see a few more conversations from Cersei with various people, including Oberyn Martell, including her father. Uh, and there's kind of a debate here as to whether or not we think Cersei's being genuine in her comments. She does play up about how she feels distraught over the death of her son, and she's worried about the future for her other son. Uh, greater good, how genuine do you think Cersei is being here? I personally thought she was being very genuine because I remember in season two when she was advising Sansa on what it takes to be a queen, she said, the only people you should really love is your children. And at this point in the story, Cersei, I think, is realizing that she's starting to lose everything that she holds dear. Like, Joffrey is dead, Marcella's off in Dorne, Tommen is on the throne now. He's, he's the only ch uh, you know, just, she has left in her immediate life, so she'd be very protective of him, and her relationship with Jamie is falling apart, so I think she's trying to clutch onto whatever she can at this point. I, I don't know that I totally agree with you here. I think Cersei's the type who might be lying even when she says hello. Uh, I, I think that she, although she is genuinely distraught, I think that she's playing some angles here. And I think that she really wants to see her brother Tyrion die. I think she's buttering up Oberyn Martell, and I think she's She's clearly trying to butter up her father, who sees right through it and says, I'm going to stop, we're not going to talk about the trial. Yeah, well, I think whether Cersei is being genuine or whether she's just manipulating people, I think at this point she's convinced that Tyrion is guilty, that she's not willing to entertain any other possibility. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I, you know, it was interesting when she says to Oberyn, when she's talking to Oberyn, who says, you know, we're going to have a, a, there'll be a fair trial, fall, you know, and she says, well, there'll be a trial at least. Uh, I think that that's a clue that she's definitely trying to influence the judges as much as she thinks she can get away with. So we get a lot more Littlefinger in this episode than we've gotten previously. Uh, we start off with him and Sansa heading towards uh, the Eyrie as part of the Vale. He's going back to see Lisa Aaron, uh, who he is engaged to. Uh, and as they're walking through this crevasse to the gates, to the, the gates to the Eyrie, he makes a comment uh, that, you know, it would be impossible for an army to take that. Uh, 10,000 men would only be the equivalent of one man in the right place at the right time. And the questions come up, is uh, Littlefinger as dangerous as, say, 10,000 soldiers? Uh, I, you know, for all of his danger, I don't think that he is. I think 10,000 soldiers would... Uh, cause more trouble in uh, in Westeros. If Daenerys came over with 10,000 soldiers, I think that would be far more dangerous. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to mute you there because Littlefinger has proven in the past he's well, um, he's well able to manipulate people. And, well, when it comes to play, playing the Game of Thrones, um, usually uh, usually having the right connections and uh, play, and playing your cards right um, Proves to uh, who's to be better uh, uh, for conquering than any amount of soldiers. So that's where I stand on that issue. All right, you win this round, greater good. We'll see what happens next <laughs> time. All right, uh, okay. let's also talk about some other things. Uh, we saw Locke get it uh, by the farm, so to speak, in a particularly brutal way. Uh, Hodor takes him out. Hodor, under the control of Bran, kind of hulks out and uh, breaks out of his chains and picks Locke up and, and almost rips his head off. That's a pretty brutal way to go. Uh, is that too early for Locke? Do we do we think that we wanted to see more of him? What do you think, Greater Good? Personally, I, th I think it was a bit premature. Like, Noah Taylor is a great actor, and I really liked uh, what he did with that character, even though it's a very different character from the book. So uh, I was disappointed to see him go. I, th I thought it would be interesting to 
uh, flesh out that character uh, character a bit more and you know see John react to uh, finding out Fulton has sent him to um, to wipe out what Starks are left. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I like Noah Taylor too. I'd like to see more of him, but I think story wise, I think that that's all we could have gotten from him. You know, he was there specifically to kind of, you know, bump off the Starks to uh, make sure that Bolton had a clear line of succession to take over Winterfell and the North. Uh, and I think that, you know, in a battle scene like that, when there's a battle going on, that would be Locke's best opportunity to capitalize that. And clearly he was going to kill both Bran and Jon Snow as soon as he got the chance. I think Bran knew that, and so they took him out. Well, I think we've covered all of the relevant points in this particular episode. Uh, I want to thank Greater Good for joining me today. Thanks a lot for uh, participating. My pleasure. Uh, and we're going to be back next week with episode six. Uh, we've crossed the halfway point, passed the threshold. We're coming up on the last five episodes of Game of Thrones. So make sure you join us next week. I'm sure there'll be plenty of uh, things to debate here on Wiki is Fan versus Critic. Uh, once again, I'm Matt Achney for Rotten Tomatoes. Thanks for joining us.